Let's combat and fight back with maltracks The war the minds, they want control of the masses And common core, they dumb us down in the classes Without knowledge, we can't gain access Build with the elders, take notes and write classes We keep whining on the block, how it's gonna stop Let's start supporting our own, make their supply drop We buy stocks, then we buy blocks Cause we know the truth and we tuned in to Dr. Maya a BB for Hodi A, a BB to me. Peace to all of my thinkers, truth speakers, and truth seekers. Welcome to another Truth to Power Talk with your sister, Dr. Ma'at. Thank you for joining another powerful discussion. And tonight, I have with me my Baba, my brother, and he is no stranger to the community. Baba, I mean, old you woke. Peace and love to you, Baba. How are you doing? Peace and black power, Dr. Mayotte. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm standing up for this one. I got me a stand up desk, you know. You know, you're <laughs> my age, you need your blood to keep circulating. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely. I'm standing up for this one. It's an honor to be here, uh, uh, as always. And, you know, let's bring some perspective to the people. Absolutely, Bob. And it's always an honor to have you. I see you repping. Show the shield. Show the UACI. Hey, I had to get it right. I had to get it right. And, look, and Bob, why didn't you tell me you were rocking it so I could wear my shirt? I could have <laughs> rock, I could have rocked my shirt today. Yeah, I should have done that. I should have hit you up like, let's rock that UACI. You know, we had a very powerful meeting today. So I had to go put my <laughs> so I had to go put my UACI on today because it's going down this summer. And absolutely. Beyond, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. And family, stay tuned because Bob is a thousand percent correct. It's going down this summer, the UACI. We already have the dates. We already have the information. And so Bob is going to, we're going to, he's going to update the website. Yeah, as soon cool. as he update the website, family will be dropping the link in the chat, but be on the lookout for the announcement very, very soon. Okay. For the UACI Summer STEM Camp of 2024. This will be our third iteration of the UACI Summer STEM Camp. And we're growing, family. We're growing. Right. We're growing. Right. The first year, um, and our goal has always been 30 students, right? So the first year, I think we were at like maybe 11 or 12. Last year, we were at 22. So I know without a shadow of a doubt, we are going to hit that 30 student mark. So make hey, sure that when we oh, drop yeah. the announcement that you register right away. Register your Come child on. right away because we're only going to use, we're only going to work with 30 students. And I remember Baba when I was in New York, there was a mama that asked me. She said, "Well, doc, if it's virtual." She said, "I mean, you all should have as many children as possible." And I said, right. "No." No, 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 no. We understand the, the teacher to student ratio, and we want to mm -hmm. make sure that we give every student an intimate ex learning experience. And right. you can't do that right. if you got four instructors right. and you got a hundred children online. You just no. can't do that. No, 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 and so, no. yeah, I said we want to give our over quantity. There you go, quality we're, we're over build, quantity. We're building topic. engineers. We're building software developers. We're build. We're building cybersecurity specialists. We're getting these children ready to conquer the world of AI. So, so it's quality over quantity we're developing real relationships and what and, and, and the goal of uaci is to plug our children into career pipelines instantly. absolutely you know so yeah for, for that you got to have intimate knowledge about every student that you have so so, yeah, so that's so yeah we, we we will do 300 students but we're gonna do 30 at a time Come on, 30 at a time, Ashe. Ashe. <laughs> Family, right now, take a moment out to thumb up this video. Regardless of what platform you're on, I know we got some, some people. Shout out to the Uhuru Academy. Some people yeah. are watching over there. Some people are watching on Baba Amin's Facebook page. Some people are watching on my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. So, family, wherever you are, please, let's thumb up the video. Okay, thumb up the video, thumb up the video. And also, family, share this video. We want each one teach one in the 21st century. And, Baba, look, in 2020, for to each one teach one all you have to do is just share this discussion yeah. on yeah. your social media yeah. platforms and also family make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channels so if you're on dr oya edward my subscribe then after you subscribe to my youtube channel Head on over to the Uhuru Academy, right? right? Subscribe to that YouTube channel and vice versa. So make sure that you subscribe to these YouTube channels, family. Okay? And when you subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell so that whenever we upload new content, you are notified. So, Baba, let's jump right in to yes. the topic. The topic is black people blamed for the Francis Scott Key, I'm sorry, Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing. 
So they blamed it, Baba. I know yeah. I know a lot of you heard about what happened. I was coming back. It was crazy. I was um I had just landed in Baltimore, not Baltimore, I was in da- Dallas, Dallas Airport. So mm-hmm. I landed in Dallas Airport, Baba. This was last Tuesday. And as soon as I landed, you know, I'm finally getting um, you know, a signal because in Ghana they had some network issues. Anybody that's heard about it, they had some network issues. Right. That network was down right. for days, you know, in Ghana. So we couldn't call out. Uh, we could barely get on the internet. And so there were a lot of issues there. And I was there with my family and all shout out to Insa African Explorations. I was there with the sister Marjorie and her uh, husband, um, right. Kennedy. And so we're out there, we're doing work, we're exploring, but we we hardly could year, use our cell phones and we could hardly get on the, the internet. So anyway, we get back to Dulles. You know, the first thing, Bob, what we're doing is everybody's turning on their phones because now we, we got internet access. We're on a network. <laughs> and so as soon as I turned my phone on, I'm getting messages, boop, 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 family reaching out. Hey, are you guys okay? Which way are you coming back to Baltimore? Um, you know, this key, this, the, the key bridge, the Francis Scott key bridge collapsed. And then I'm going on Instagram and I'm seeing videos of the actual bridge collapsing. Yeah. And then, yeah. of yeah. course, the conspiracy theorists, they're flying around. Oh, I think it was planned. That don't look right. Cool. How, how, how right. Bridge supposed to look? Yeah. Yes, Baba. So I'm like, we're being bombarded with all of these messages. Yeah. And I'm like, what is going on? And so anyway, uh, the, the bridge did collapse. And uh, my heart goes out to everyone. Um, impacted by that. My mother, one of her students, uh, who's from Honduras, her dad had um, tragically died on that bridge. He was actually in a truck really? with um, with six people, six of his uh, co-workers, oh, and they, they recovered two bodies, and his body was one body that was recovered, mm. and they haven't found the other four bodies, and they believe that it's because when the bridge collapsed, that that is now under the debris, that the br- debris is on top of um, those gentlemen who were in the truck. Mm. And so, you know, my heart goes out to everyone, um, yeah. you know, yeah. impacted by the collapse Absolutely. of Absolutely. the bridge. But as soon, Baba, as that happened, of course, everybody wanted to know why, right? Everyone, right. that was the first thing. People were right. like, why, you know, why did this happen? You know, what was the cause? And so, you know, we did find out that the um, cargo ship or it was a container ship, it lost power. Because that, when we were watching the video, Bible, we were like, well, wait a minute. You, you can clearly see that you can't, you know, clear that. What the hell was the captain thinking? You know, that's what everybody's saying. Right. But come to find out, the captain said that the, 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 the container ship lost power and the captain did call it in. They, he yeah. called in a mayday, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's what transpired. And, and so we found out that that was the case. But then, Bob, that wasn't good enough for some folks. Right. There were some folks who wanted to blame the mayor. <laughs> right. They started attacking the DEI. Yes, they politicized it. They started attacking, you know, DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion. So it says right here, family, Baltimore Bridge collapse creates more DEI attacks. How allies can push back. So uh, shout out to Sister Janice. Um, Asare, she this sister publishes a lot of uh, great articles on on Forbes, and I, I do follow her on uh, Instagram. And every time that she, you know, announces that she has a new article, I do rush uh, to read her articles. But it says right here, look at this: around 1:30 a.m. on Tuesday, March the 26th, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, collapsed after a cargo ship. I said container, my bad. Cargo ship collided into the bridge. The bridge collapse was caught on video where viewers could see a total blackout on the ship. Uh, Maryland Governor Wes Moore declared a state of emergency following the collapse. Details about what caused the, co- the co- uh, collusion, uh, collision, I'm sorry, are still being placed together, right? It says Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott spoke about the press, spoke with the press about what an, what an, an unthinkable and unspeakable tragedy the incident was. Let's keep going, y'all. Amidst the horrific news of the bridge collapse, some chose to focus on Brandon Scott's age and race and produced and, pr- and proceeded to blame DEI, Baba, what the hell, <laughs> DEI, <laughs> for the bridge collapse. Utah State Representative Phil L- Lyman, along with Florida congressional candidate Anthony Sabatini, 
were among those blaming the incident on DEI. One ex-user tweeted that Mayor Scott was Baltimore's DEI mayor. Let's yeah, pause he wasn't right elected, there. He was hired. Yeah. yeah he, yes. He, no, he was elected. That boy, <laughs> he's a young guy. Yeah. He won the election fair and square. Right. Right. He, you know, so he was elected. He wasn't hired. So they say Baltimore's DEI mayor with mm. the tweet garnering nearly 6,000 reposts at the time of the article, while another user tweeted that the mayor looks like a teen. The creator behind The Darkest Hue, a platform created as a safe space for dark-skinned black girls, uh, women, and uh, femmes, wrote on an in Instagram post, it is becoming increasingly clear that DEI is being used as a dog whistle for black people, as if it substitutes racial sh sh slurs. Mm -hmm. Bob, but that's so true. I was telling my students... I was telling my students, I said, well, wait a minute. And I want to read this last paragraph. I was saying that, yeah, they do say that now. Instead of calling you the N-word, she's a DEI hire. Oh, yeah, DEI hire. hire. So yeah. now that's the cold word for the N-word or just a cold word for black person. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then, Baba, I think it's very insultful that, you know, when black people are now hired or put in certain positions, it's not because we're competent and we're qualified of course not. Right, to be in these positions. It's because of diversity, equity, inclusion. Let right. me read this last paragraph, Bob, and I'm going to hand it on over to you. It says, DEI is a term that has become increasingly more polarizing, uh, an acronym created to highlight the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion has been warped and distorted by DEI crit critics. Let me pause right here again, Bob. They did this with the word woke, right? So uh -huh. they're, taking, they're taking these terms that, were, that, are, that are meant to help or to uplift or to bring awareness, you know, right. to black people, to the black plight, and they change the definition or they try to make it a bad thing. So now DEI right. is becoming a bad thing, just like being woke now has become a bad thing, you know, right. and, right. They, and they do this. Even CRT, critical, uh, critical race uh, theory, right? Critical mm -hmm. race theory. That's now become, you know, a bad thing. Yeah. And, I, uh -huh. and, I rem and I remember Dr. Wade Nobles said that that is power. He said power, true power is the ability to define reality and have other people accept your definition. So they, they're doing that, Baba, and they do it with words, right? Like when you define reality, how do you find it? With words, with shapes, with imagery, and white folks do that very well. They, oh, they do that, real, that very well, Baba. So my la the last sentence, it says, the way that terms, yep, like, look, like woke and critical race theory <laughs> right, right. <laughs> have been hijacked, morphed, and, uh, and mutilated, the term DEI is experiencing a similar fate. There is an increasing phenomenon where individuals who have very little understanding of DEI are critiquing its utility and effectiveness. I land my plane there, Bob. What are your thoughts on this incident? Well, uh, well, number one, of course, my heart goes out to all those who, who were lost in the incident. Uh, all, all the people who, who transitioned uh, in the in heart goes out to, the, to their families. Uh, as far as the political and racialized backlash, uh, are we surprised? I mean, after January 6th, the first person that got arrested after the riots in D.C. was black. I'm like, how do you find a black person? We wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they was arresting black people for January 6th. So I'm not surprised that uh, 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 the, the right wing or whatever would use uh, this DEI term as a catchphrase. I'm not surprised that they will politicize what happened. Say, you know what? Like, like one of them actually rationalized. They say, man, a, a bridge, a, a ship uh, collapsed into a bridge in Baltimore. Wait a minute. Don't they got that young black mayor? Like, like somebody made that connection in their mind. Like this is a perfect opportunity to go after this young black mayor. This is the yep. perfect matter of fact, it's his fault that the boat collided into the bridge. It's the mayor's <laughs> fault that, that, that the boat lost power. It's the mayor's fault that he called May Day and nobody responded. It's the mayor. The mayor should have done something. But you know what? If they would have had a, a old white man in there, this would have never happened. Woke up that morning, his, his sixth sense, his, 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 his crackology would have went off in his brain and he would have known that something's going to happen to this bridge and let me call out and let them know so we could prevent this whole incident. He would have made sure all the boats worked. 
You know what I'm saying? So, 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 yeah, it must be because they got this DEI, this diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, I didn't know we did affirmative action elections now, right? But we got this DEI mayor over there. And, and so the way it was used because it doesn't even apply to how the man got the job. You can tell that it's being used as a racial dog whistle. You know Absolutely. What I'm saying? And, and, and they're politicizing it because at the same time, diversity equity and inclusion programs and departments are being shut down all over the country facts that's happening right now you have facts school problem. districts that have dei uh, uh departments that are being disbanded and shut down and defunded so dei programs in at colleges are being defunded so you have dei programs actively being defunded right now so they 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 not just talking noise they dancing in the end zone facts so 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 people got to realize when 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 these folks do like like when they were attacking affirmative action with with the words they were attacking it in action there was mm -hmm. some action behind that so mm -hmm. there are actions political actions going on behind uh uh this this use of dei the use of woke you had people being arrested as black identity extremists and things like that there was a real attack on wokeness you know what i'm saying you had the little black history that was in schools being snatched out of the school so so while they were screaming woke they were also canceling now black studies programs you got uh uh, uh my brother uh the elder down at temple dr malefia santi, santi absolutely the black studies program down there for decades now they're in jeopardy they got a white department head they're snatching all their funding from the black studies and they get the high behind the 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 whole uh uh agenda or the narrative that woke is bad so woke is whack dei is 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 this so you 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 demonize or crucify what it is and the purpose of it turn it into a slang while at the same time you destroying all of the programs that push diversity equity or inclusion you getting them out the way we so far away from the reparations conversation right now it don't even make sense we come on ain't even arguing over reparations now now we even argue when they can reduce us to arguing over the word the politics have already gotten away from us come on facts baba Facts. I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And and then look at that. You hear what happened, Baba, down in Florida. Hmm. And I probably could pull up the article really quickly or somebody could throw it in the chat. They started, I think, an institution down in Florida. Florida fired all of the DEI high, uh, high, uh, hires. Fired them, Baba. Let me let me see if I can pull up that article real hmm. quick. And and DeSantis, I'm sorry, DeSantis <laughs> tweeted that he Florida. was glad that they did it. Florida, I'm going to say Florida fires... Yep, DEI. Here it is right here, Baba. Mm -hmm. Here it is. It says University of Florida Access DEI office under GOP led law aimed at. So it was the University of Florida. It eliminated all DEI uh, related positions right here. It's all over the place, guys. And I, I can let me share my screen really quickly just to show you. Dr. Mod is not making this up. This is real family. And this is what's happening. Hold on. Look at this. University of Florida Access DEI office under GOP led aim. I'm sorry, law aimed at, and I can't read the rest of it. Look at this New York Times, University of Florida eliminates all DEI related positions. Mm. This is real, y'all. Look at this real. ABC student protest. So you got students who are protesting the DEI firings at the University of Florida. This is serious. And this is what I shared with my students. Bob, I mean, and I had a conversation and, and, and shout out to my students. I had a discussion with them earlier today and I was talking to them about the importance of mastering the ideas and concepts that they are that are being presented to them at the university and the importance of building your own. So those are the conversations that we had. You know, mm. I told them, I said, you got to I said, look, by the time you all get out there with your degrees and this is my freshman students. So this is the next what, three years, because they're getting ready to be sophomores. So within the next three years, I said, by the time you get out of there, corporations will no longer be incentivized to have a certain percentage of minorities who work for them. It won't be any incentives. Like right now you get tax breaks and, you know, you get more money for this and you get all of these, you know, incentives. They're incentivized right. to keep a percentage of minorities on staff. But I said, what's going to happen 
when that no longer is the case. You will walk into an interview and they'll say, they may be an all white company and they'll say, well, yeah, you know, I interviewed, you know, 30 African-Americans, but they just weren't qualified. They couldn't, they couldn't make it past the technical interview because this is what they used to do, Baba, Mm. in, in industry. Back in the day, Baba, you go in, you have your resume, you do your job interview and they, well, what do you know? What are your job qualifications? Oh, I know Python. I can build circuits. I know some cybersecurity, whatever, whatever. They pay you, they give you, get you your 80, 90K a year job. They start you, you know, whatever. Now you go through an interview like that when they're trying to get to know you and your qualifications wow. and who you are and your desires and what you want to do. But then, Bob, they, they, they now give you a technical interview. So now you're sitting in front of a panel. We know that. 65% of engineers are white males. So now you're sitting in front of a panel of older white gentlemen yeah. who are going to ask you questions. So and so, please please solve this derivative, you know, Mr. So and so, can you can you solve this derivative? Can you solve this differential equation? Can you solve this calculus program? I mean, a calculus problem? Can you write a Python program that does A, B, and C, or C, yeah. or C++, or Java? Or per- That's what they're doing right now. Right. So I was telling my students, when you walk in, it'll no longer be, we're not hiring because you're black. We're not hiring you because you're incompetent. We're not hiring you because you're unqualified. So I said, you need to be mastering these ideas and concepts. And then I said, and better yet, focus on building your own. I said, is. Morgan State has been around. We've had the School of Engineering program since 1984. So since 1984, so we're looking at a total of almost what 40 years, Baba, of yeah. having is it 40 years, Baba, blah, 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 of having this program, right? Where is our black Silicon Valley? Where are our engineering consultant firms and, and corporations where we have a pipeline that we've established between university and industry, but it's an industry that we own and control? Where is that? And so that's the conversation that I've been having with my students. If black people had their own, we wouldn't be worried about DEI. It wouldn't matter if we had our own. That is. But Baba, right now, we don't, that's not the case. So black folks should be a little worried right now. I'm just saying, because that's not the case. You know, so anyway, Baba, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, you're right. I mean, we we sacrificed, you know, and I'm getting ready to to speak uh, at Yale and shout out to to my sister Kamaria, 70 years after Brown versus Board of Education at the nexus of blackness, disability and education. Uh, yeah. We're going to be uh, uh, talking about that next week. But it takes me back to integration where we were sold a narrative that that tricked us into sacrificing ownership for inclusion. Come on, teach, Baba. You know, it it tricked us away. It tricked us away. We saw Jackie Robinson uh, rise, but we didn't we didn't notice the Negro Leagues falling Mm. and and all the jobs that fell with it and all the businesses that fell with it. We watched the uh, Little Rock Nine Central Central uh, Little Rock Nine get marched into Central High School. Like, yeah, they made it. They got in there. But we didn't see Dunbar Junior High and Little Rock that closed down in less five less than five years after that. Or mm-hmm. Horace Mann High School in Little Rock that closed down, that the people fought to get those schools open, right? So we looked at the nine go into the white space and forgot about the 9,000 that were still getting underfunded and discriminated against in the up in the predominantly black schools. Then you mm-hmm. saw teachers lose, black teachers lose their job, thousands of black principals lose their job, and then had some reverse affirmative action because most of them were replaced by white teachers and white principals. Right. And so we don't see that side of it. But we've been we've been given this tunnel vision to say you got to go work for Microsoft. You got to go work for Google. You got to go work for these people and get these jobs and fight for them to include you, knowing that all of us can't work for them. Come on. That's a fact. And we're told you don't you don't you don't want to start a business. That's just too much of a hassle. You don't want to start your own. Don't do that. That's what master used to tell the slave. Boy, whew, be happy that you're just a slave. Mm. Well, if you had my responsibilities, it'll drive you crazy. Mm. You have to deal with this wife and all this land and the taxes. You don't want this problem, old bo. Just be happy being a slave. You shows right, mouse. I don't want that problem. <laughs> I was happy being your head man. And we still have that mentality. It's true, Bob. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just, just your person. Man, just still, your person. Yeah, you still sitting there. You know, you can't. And, and, and <sighs> DEI, DEI is a dog whistle that says, they can't handle it. Mm-hmm. They're not qualified. They're not qualified. Absolutely. They can't handle it. They can't handle the receipt. They're not ready to run the plantation. Mm-hmm. 
See, they can't handle it. And here we are. I'm going to prove to you that, fool, they know you can handle it for real. They know they lying when they say it. Right. Come on. Come on, Baba. You can prove it all you want to. They have an agenda. And the agenda is about maintaining power, not sharing power. Mm. And, And your suppression is just a part of that agenda. The question is, what's your agenda? What's your agenda? And what's our agenda? As a collective, what are we raising our children? We want to raise our children to have the same challenges that we had. Come on, Baba. And even worse, they got a movie coming out on the 12th called Civil War. Mm. About a dystopian future, not so distant future United States, where you have a white militias taking over Washington, D.C. or whatever. It's about to be released. They're fixing their mind. Getting ready. They're gutting the DEI programs. You know, part of the the, the far right agenda is to develop white states, what they call white states. Facts teach, Baba. So when you when you look at these attacks, there is an agenda attached to these. There are states that want to clear out. They want to Palestine some black folks out of certain states in the United States, in this country. We're going to watch the agenda. They're annexing their own school districts. Y'all, mm. you go to a lot of urban schools, you, where the white kids at? You look at the population and say, okay, this city is still uh, uh, 67% white. Then you go to the public schools and it's just 10% white. Where them kids at? Where the kids at? Mm-hmm. Where the babies? We need to be looking at that, not telling them to stop, but we need to talk about what we need to start. Right. Absolutely. You know. And, and so, so, so that's where I'm at with it, Doctor Maya. Mm-hmm. Good, put it in their face. I'm so glad the dude in Utah said that. Put it in their face because we have to put it in our face. We won't do anything. We won't do nothing. Yeah, we won't do nothing. Yeah. Put it in their face. Well, I'm so glad Trump run. I, I, I know y'all gonna get mad, but I ain't gonna lie. The best four years of my life was when Trump was in office because y'all was black with me for four years. He <laughs> said he was black with me, right? We was all black. I mean, Don Lemon grew an afro. I, mean, I was like, man, what is going on? <laughs> you know what I ain't gonna say black with before oh, yeah. NBC black people went natural, you know. Then then Biden uh, uh got in office and uh, sister got a perm back, lemon got fired, you know, and it, 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 it's and, and it's back to sleepy, sleepy, sleepy time. Always. It seemed like Bob, but that's always the case. Yeah. Seem like that's always the case. We wake up, we wake up, and then we go right back to sleep. Cause we scared, and we get all pro, we black. And we, it's us, it's us. Then, 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 then they feed us a fake victory to calm mm-hmm. us down. Because they know when we band together, they can't really stop us. No, not at the all. The world watches our behavior and mimics it, so they can't really stop us. But they can feed us false victories like integration which is a false victory. They feed us false victories like Biden being, the Democrats being elected. That's a false victory. And we said, well, we got something. We, we ain't got nothing. We ain't got nothing, Baba Teach. Yeah, everything that we have is what we build and what we scratch and what we fight for. And we just have to do a better job of owning our successes and stop waiting on other people to tell us when we won, how we gonna win, what we got. Just get out there and vote. You gotta do way more than, more vote. than that. Come on, Bible facts. You gotta do way more than that. And why won't your friends educate you on that? Why won't your Democrat friends and Republican friends really educate you on what you really have to do to empower a community? We just, my generation was raised to literally get out the ghetto. We were raised to leave the black community. We were not raised and trained to invest in it. That's right. We weren't. But That's Asian right. people evidently were because they popped them nail shops and nail shop, that lady been up there doing them nails for 30 years. Did they? Arab Americans learned how to invest in the black community because why I didn't travel the country and I find an Arab owned corner store everywhere I go. Come on, 7 Eleven, the jewelry stores. Come on, right? So, so someone in their education prioritized investing in the community, but they without having to live 
in, in the community. community. Absolutely. And those of us who live in the community, we've been taught to invest our intellect and our skills into institutions outside of the community. Outside of the community. Absolutely. And we've been taught that our community has no value or less value. The biggest problem with what with with them using DEI as a racial slur and, and to say that we're not qualified, the biggest problem is that we believe him. Mm, come on, Baba. That's come the on. biggest problem. It's not that he said it. Our biggest problem in that is that we believe him. If they wanted to take us to court, Dr. Maad, and say they don't believe that they're equal either. All they got to do is scroll social media, whatever, and use black testimony to prove black inferiority because we mm. call ourselves inferior. Mm. See, black folks can't run. As soon as they make an accusation about uh, uh, improprieties about money, of course they can't be lying. See, black folks don't know how to run nothing. I watched uh, black charter schools came under attack in the early 2000s all across the country. All of a sudden, these black charter schools that were making a difference. All of a sudden, you're seeing this pattern of people getting accused of, of cheating on a standardized test. Right. And, and and nobody really made an outcry because in the back of our mind, of our mind, like, yeah, they probably did cheat. Mm. Fact, not probably. thinking that maybe they're maybe they're maybe they're being pushed out of that industry because somebody else is trying to come in. Mm. We don't we don't think that we don't think these people will do that, but they've been doing it since we've been here. Facts, Baba. Yeah. So the biggest issue is that we believe them. We don't want to say it, but we say it to each other. Mm -hmm. We believe them. We perpetuate the energy. We treat black professionals like they don't know what they do. Mm. Facts, 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 facts. And this, Baba, is I, I feel like I'm like, were you on the phone when I was talking to, to, to Dr. Dennis or saw Winkler earlier today? Because he's getting ready to send me an article that just dropped that talked about how um, at, at the university level, how you know, black um, professors mm. are given lower evaluations than than white professors. And I'm talking about even like in, in HBCUs. So if you are, you know, a black professor, you are given a lower value mm. or lower evaluation scores. You know, you tend to get lower evaluation scores from black students. Right. So they, I, I want you to hear what I'm saying, Baba. Yeah. At black institutions, Black professors typically receive, and this is what the data is showing, lower evaluations or low evaluation scores than non-black professors. Mm -hmm. Baba. Mm -hmm. So like you said, it goes to show who are you valuing more? You're valuing, you're valuing non-black. Who are the black students valuing? They're valuing non-black faculty. And let me tell you something, Baba. You know what the non-black faculty say about our students? Wow. Oh, Call them all kinds of names. They wow. dumb. They don't understand. Why can't they learn like the white children? Why can't they learn like the Asian children? I can't even mm. reveal to you some of the comments that I've heard non-black faculty say about black students. Mm. And I'm like, well, why are you teaching at HBCU? Even one faculty member came to <laughs> me and told me I had to dumb down my material. Doc, you, wow. doc, you, you, you might, you know, had to dumb down your material. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, what I'm not going to do is dumb down anything. I said, what I am going to do is have the students rise to my standards and expectations, but I'm not dumbing down anything. But the non-Black faculty, their perceptions, the, per the perceptions that they operate with regarding our Black children, Baba, is disgusting. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's disgusting, Baba. It's they came disgusting. to campus with them. Come on. They came to campus with those preconceived notions. They came to campus and, and, it's, and it's weird because so many of our students are coming from underfunded public schools. Facts. So many of our students are coming from, from situations where they are literally dealing with criminalization. They're dealing with underfunding. They're dealing with systemic racism. They're dealing with, 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 with uh, teacher shortages and they still want to come to Morgan and be an engineer and we want to call them dumb. Mm. But they mm -hmm. fought all those odds to get to where they're going, but we won't write their stories and celebrate them for, 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 for fighting through. 
But we'll mm-hmm. criminalize them and say, see, this generation don't want to learn. See those social media generation. See y'all problem, y'all problem. But the problem has never been the fact that we didn't do our job in building and cultivating a powerful education experience for them along the way. Absolutely. And we don't do our job in making sure that the institutions they do go into culturally understand them. Instead of constantly comparing them. Well, you're not doing as good as white children. Well, what are your metrics? What are your metrics? Why are white children the standard? Come on, facts. 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 As long as white children are the standard, we're still segregated. Mm-hmm. As long as another group's performance is the standard, then you then you're operating literally in a system of white supremacy. Supremacy, absolutely. Absolutely, Baba. Yeah. Absolutely. And let me share this other article uh, with the family. So it says GOP gubernatorial candidate Phil Lyman blames Baltimore Bridge collapse on diversity. Oh, Baba, when I read this, I was just like, oh, my gosh. Salt Lake City state law making Utah gubernatorial candidate Phil Lyman said the collapse of the bridge in Baltimore is the result of governors who prioritize diversity <laughs> in a statement on social media, right? Yeah. So wait a minute. So it's not the engineers or maybe the mechanics yeah. who were, no. you know, no. keeping the ship no. up or ch- it wasn't that. <laughs> it was because the governors are prioritizing diversity, right? right. So it says Baltimore Francis Guy Key, okay, collapsed early Tuesday after being uh, struck by a container ship uh, it, uh, that lost power. It says two people believed to be on the bridge when it collapsed have been rescued and officials. And that's not true. It's, it's actually. Yeah, there it is. OK, believe six others. Yeah, are still unaccounted for. Well, that's true. Um, Lyman in a in a blanding Republican who is challenging Governor Spencer Cox for the GOP nomination for governor responded by sharing a series of posts on X that insinuate so-called diversity, equity, inclusion policies are to blame for the disaster. He says, this is what happens when you have governors who prioritize diversity over the well-being of the security of citizens. So, Baba, I wanted to share this because literally at this point, you have politicians who are building entire campaigns Mm -hmm. on going against Mm -hmm. DEI. You know, that is their thing. And they're trying to convince, um, you know, society that, DEI is a bad thing and we need to get rid of it. And they're creating entire campaigns on this. You know, you know what I'm saying, Baba? Yeah. And so I'm like, it's not just this one. It'll be somebody else, you know, that's right. going at the DEI. So they're building these campaigns up. And like you said, Baba, and you dropped a lot of jewels tonight. You said while actively getting rid of or dismantling DEI programs. Mm-hmm. So they're not just saying this stuff, as you said right. earlier, they're not just saying this stuff. They're actually cutting these programs out. So Baba, do you want to add to that? The fact that now you have politicians building campaigns on this. What well, do you uh, well, I mean, they built the whole nation on it. Mm. That's America's original political platform. It, uh, uh, our ancestors were brought over here in chains. There was no diversity, equity, and inclusion. Ask the indigenous here about diversity, equity, and inclusion in the United States. You mm-hmm. know, and, and when they say when 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 they say that uh, uh, don't include them, that's that's un-American. When they say it's un-American to have DEI, they're not lying. That is un-American. Mm. Now I know America promotes certain ideals. That, that all men are created equal, but has that ever really been the practice? Mm-hmm. You are talking about a new America. If you're talking about America where an America where people are judged solely on their merit, when you're talking about an America where people get equity and you went from equality to equity, equity sounds physical. That sounds like you're talking about sharing wealth. That scares a lot of people. Absolutely. And it scares rich white people who know that all they got to do is tell poor white people that black people are taking over and poor white people going to line up. They don't even want extra money. They just want whiteness. That's facts. They don't want a tax break. All they want is whiteness. They're happy. So you're going to give me my whiteness back. Cause Obama took it. Mm. So, so now you get, they're getting their whiteness back, you know, with this. And of course it's election year, 2024. 
a very unpopular wars going on right now in the Middle East that that Biden is losing losing support. I don't know what the Democrats going to do to trick the left to stay with them this time. You yeah, know, exactly. They, they, they put Bernie out there. You know, Bernie has been the the has been the bait the, uh, the last few elections, and then sooner, right. then Bernie say, "All right, go vote for them." Every time. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they fell for Bernie two times in a row. So I don't know who they, what they're going to throw out there now. You know what I'm saying? But but it's it's just interesting to see uh, 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 the, the landscape. And I just want us to start thinking two, three steps ahead. Mm-hmm. Not, not, not to be afraid. But y'all, what we going to do? We can build our own schools. We can build our own businesses. We can do global business. And guess what, Professor this and Professor that? You can start a university too. Come on, come on, come on, Bobby. You better say it. And there's still land up for grass. We can build new towns. We can build new communities. People do it every day. Every day. I know it sounds day, weird Father. to some of y'all, but if it sounds weird to you, then you need to ask yourself, what type of education did I really get? Mm. If building your own sounds weird. If it sounds weird. Come on, Baba. If it sounds like, like that's far-fetched. If that sounds far-fetched to you, then, then we have to ask ourselves, what type of education did I really get if I got an education that teaches me that I can't build anything, especially I can't build anything without their help? Come on. What kind of education is that? It's That's no, it's not education. white supremacy. It is white supremacy. Or black inferiority, which, which I think is more dangerous. Absolutely. It's literally black inferiority. And we got to get over that. We got to get to the point when they scream DEI, we like, okay, whatever. We still exactly. We exactly. Still exactly, Baba. And I want to I, I want to shout out to, to the Queen Mother, Sister Amina. She said, the mayor of Baltimore nor the governor were not driving the darn tanker. Right. Like, that's that's how they act. Like, mm-hmm. like he, and people were like, yeah, and retweeting it. I said, these some dumb mother effers, Baba. I mean, that's what I was thinking, Baba. Like, yeah. they retweeting this crap. Well, they you know, know who they talking to is dumb. Right, facts. Because they miseducated all them poor work class white folks that read that and say, yeah, that's right. Right, right, <laughs> facts. <laughs> facts. Yeah, well, that's probably a thug. Look, that's why the boat crashed. They, I mean, they, they'll believe anything. They think Trump facts. is Jesus. I mean, he'll believe anything. Facts, Baba. As long and as you give them their whiteness back. As long as you get the whiteness back. I also want to shout out my brother, JT Corn Rings in the building. Big bro, I got to call you. I'm going to give you a call before the week is out. We got to get the Read Book Club back jumping. Baba, I want to hey. also show this clip of the mayor responding to this whole DEI uh, mess. And let me make sure that my audio is clicked because I know some po- folks are, some folks are start yelling at me in the chat. Like, Doc, is, is you, uh, you didn't, uh, <laughs> I can't hear anything. So here we go, y'all allow you, uh, Mayor Scott, if you choose to do so, to respond to the tomfoolery uh, and attacks on you for having the nerve to be black and also a mayor? Well, I think, listen, uh, uh, I know, and we all know, and you know very well, that black men and young black men in particular have been the boogeyman for those who are racist and think that only uh, uh, straight, wealthy white men should have a saying anything. We've been the boogeyman from them since the first day they brought us to this country. And what they mean by DAI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Uh, We know what they want to say, but they don't have the courage to say the N-word. And the fact that I don't uh, believe in their uh, untruthful and wrong ideology, and I am very proud proud of my heritage and who I am and where I come from, scares them. Uh, Because me being at my position means that their way of thinking, their way of life of being comfortable and suffering and while everyone else suffers is going to be at risk. And they should be afraid because that's my purpose in life. Mm. By by the way, you know, the the coded racism, before we even knew the nationalities of the men, Maria Bartiromo was out there talking about open borders and trying to somehow signal that they wanted to go after the brown people too. Because of course, that is their other target. We know that the men who are doing this hard construction work overnight, trying to fix the potholes on this bridge, working very hard, uh, were Latino. Yeah, they were. And so that's now on the table too. We know that this ship, which came from Singapore, was piloted by a very heroic crew from India who's made a call saved lives, not maybe saved lives, but did. So this is a full-throated attack. But this is also what America is. It is people of multiple races who do the hard work to make America work and literally make it work. Talk about the importance of this port. Um, Yeah, I just wanted to 
Right. Yeah. So I can, I, you know, family, you can go on YouTube and watch the whole thing. But, you know, Baba, I think that his response was um, adequate. You know, I think okay. he said, yeah, you know, like, shoot, black people, we always the boogeyman. Like we always, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, they're afraid. He basically saying y'all afraid. You're mm -hmm. afraid that your quality of life is going to be threatened when black people get in certain positions. You're afraid. He said you should be. You he said it, you should be. <laughs> you flip the term, duly elected incumbent. Come on, Baba. I said, okay. I said, all right, Brad, and I hear you. You talking okay, black today. You talking yeah. black today. Yeah, I said, them Democrats going to call them old Democrats going to go black Democrats going to call him. Brother, <laughs> you can't say we the boogeyman to them on TV. Now, we want to shape you. We oh, want to help your career. I know he getting all them calls right now. I know he getting all them calls. We want to help. We can't help you if you're going to be saying militant stuff like that. Yeah, he I did come off very militant. He did come off very militant. We were actually shocked in Baltimore how really? militant he came off. Yeah, we were shocked. You know, we were inboxing each other and talking and like, yeah. oh, you heard Brandon Scott. And yeah. He's talking black today. He seemed like he he sound like one of us, you know. Right. But yeah, he, I, I do I do agree with you that he probably got called, you know, called to the carpet for those remarks. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it. But but they just caught a young black man who has not learned how to contain his African yet when you come at him. And, mm. and they, they came at him and he felt that he, and that's how he, he, he's still a brother. That's how it came out. Like, boom, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. Like, you know, boom, you know, he, he ain't polished yet. You know, he, he and I, I like it like that. Don't ever lose that young brother. Don't ever lose that. If he, if he continues to speak strongly like that, that's the type of, that's the type of leader that you need in your local politics. Absolutely. I don't know much about him, but I, I loved his response on uh, on Joy Reid's show. He's going to make her get her braids back. <laughs> you know what? I ain't doing this with you, Baba. And so I just want to show one more incident. And shout out to Dr. Um, uh, Rashid or Rashad uh, Richie. He put this out there. Um, there was another incident that occurred. And so a video hmm. went viral you know, of a, of a white girl getting beat up or something like that. And look at this. It says attorney general yeah. blames viral brawl on DEI policies. I said, they're really doing their best, Baba. They're really Baba doing their best, yeah. you know, to, uh, to demonize mm -hmm. DEI. But I want a family to check, check this out as well. Here we go. Y'all. Hell of a story. Hell of an update. Missouri attorney general wants to charge a teen in a viral moment, put up the big full mask. A teen who got into a fight, it went viral, wants to charge the teen as an adult, okay? Uh, and there's more backstory involved. So per Atlanta Black Star, Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey is being called out for insinuating diversity, equity, and inclusion policies contributed to the viral video that left a 16 year old, Kaylee Gain, unconscious. That's the insinuation. Gain's family provided an update Friday on her condition, saying she is now stable. She is breathing on her own. The family lawyer, Brian Kip Kimmerer, shared that, quote, in the past few days, Kaylee has been able to engage in limited verbal conversations. We're glad. That she is recovering. Uh, hold on, y'all. You know how they had these daggone commercials, Baba. Here we go. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. The physical altercation, which made national headlines between Gain, a white team, and uh, Mernice. Uh, D. Clue, a 15 year old black student, occurred near Hazelwood East High School on March 8th. So basically, Baba, because I just played a minute of it and I just know how YouTubers start getting you copyright strikes and all that when you play too much right. of the video. But there was a vi viral fight, and they found out after a, a, some digging that this was the second fight that this white, white girl has right. gotten into Baba, right. you right. know, so she, you know, she, she, from what I, and I'm just, you know, speculating, but seemed like she was a bit of a bully from what, you know, from what reports are saying, this was her, and I'm talking about the white girl, this yeah. was her second fight, you know, and I guess, you know how they say sometimes Baba, you meet your match, 
She met her match. Yeah. The sister put those paws on her mm -hmm. and gave her the, and gave her the business. Mm -hmm. And so now you got the attorney general who's saying, oh, it's because of DEI. So basically he's saying it's because you got black folks in the school and you should have some. But that's what he's saying, Baba. Yes. Because of that, you have diversity, i.e. because you have black folks, black students who now are part of the student body population. This is why you have the issue. So he can't just right. come out and say, well, you got ninjas in the school. That's why this brawl happened. Right. So instead, you you know, this is because of your DEI policies, i.e. this is because, you, you know, you've had you've you created policies uh, that has increased the number of black students in this white school. And that's what he's basically saying, right. Baba. So they're blaming, they're using any incident, Baba, between black and white. I mean, anything that black folks do, now right. it's, it's being blamed on DEI. You know, they're right. demonizing and they're just taking anything, Baba, and building these campaigns on right. DEI. So, Baba, what are your thoughts about this before we close out and I hand the floor over to you? The the most disturbing aspect of that situation is him calling basically for the lynching of that black child by mm -hmm. wanting to try her as an adult uh, for defending herself, I guess, a little bit too hard, you know, and, and, and that's that's disturbing. And that's what people have to watch out because he made a very real call, you know, to want to try her as an adult. And we have a very real history in this country of trying black children as adults for lesser offenses, you know, and, and so there's precedent for what he's calling for. I don't want anybody to take that part of the statement lightly when he says we want to charge her. If they build up enough momentum, they will attempt to charge her as an adult, which mm. which is, is is basically putting her in, in prison with adult women and, and mm. basically end her life, even if it doesn't hinder life physically. But but you know what I'm saying? Hinder her moving forward. Uh, her name has now been uh, uh, leaked out there. You know what I'm saying? So she has mm -hmm. to live with this every single day. Uh, uh, and it had, had the white girl not approached, it wouldn't have been a fight in the first place, you know? And, and so of course now let's politicize it the same way they politicized black crime in the past. This is not new. This is not a new thing. DEI uh -huh. is the only, it's a new word in the equation. But this is not new. Let's take black a picture of black violence against white people and use it to create a hysteria that'll that'll open the door for us to implement uh, certain policies, right? For us to do it, we got to solid further solidify our power, suppress their numbers. They're growing in black people are growing in population. They're trying to spread out this whole integration thing and got out of control. They want to live with us. They don't want to live with each other. Let's create this fear so we can corral these people, control this movement, or you know, and 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 maintain power. And that's all it is, y'all. They don't want to share that power, but we have to look at why are we seeking power on that side of the street in the first place, right? We have to make sure that our children are safe. We have to make sure that our children are walking around with values where they're looking out for themselves and looking out for others. Absolutely. You know, cause, cause we're getting, cause the fuel that he's, that he, that, that that's being used, nothing justifies what they are doing. But are we prepared to deal with it? And we have to call a space. Look, they, we get guilted out of using the race card. They love to say, stop using the race card. But what are they doing right now? Using the race. DEI is a race card. Fact. White folks love to play the race card, but they don't want you to play it. Matter of fact, when I start talking black, black folks be like, don't there you go for the blame the white man. They blaming you for everything. Everything. Look, everything. They blame you for the bridge collapsing. They blame you for the white girl getting their head bumped down on the on the ground. They yeah. blaming you all out and open, but you you can't just come out and blame them for anything. Why? What? what and we don't blame them for stuff they really did, and they, they really did stuff we didn't even do that we didn't even do. Look, Bob, I started laughing right when you were talking because I read God is Yimmy Ya um her <laughs> comment. She said, "Not blame the gang banging thug white girl who was suspended for jumping another girl and came back to jump the young sister who defended herself against the bully gang banging white." Girl. <laughs> right. If somebody should have pulled that white girl to the side and said, you way too light for this job. Oh my gosh. That, and, you know, and I, I pray she recovers. You know what I'm saying? But I, you can look at that picture and see how that fight about to go. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. You can oh, look yeah. at that and see how that's about to go. But and then and that's another thing that they talking about too with DEI. They talking about that black culture, that hood culture bleeding over to their children too, because they children love some gangster rap and they love some some drill rap and they they love you, they. The, the, the the edginess of black culture, and so they don't want that to seep in. They they're afraid of that too. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. Baba. Yeah. Absolutely. So, well, Baba, bring us on out with promoting the the Ahuru Academy. I'm yes. going to share the screen, Baba. So take us, take us, take us home. Hold on, let me let me let me bring this up for you. Here we All go, right. Baba. All right, y'all. Y'all know we walk it like we talk it. All right, head over to AhuruAcademy.com right now. The world's greatest online African centered school, uh, Uhura Academy online K through 12. We're enrolling right now. We enroll year round. Okay. About to announce our summer programs really soon, which one is going to include the UACI mm -hmm. summer STEM camp. I'm hype about this year because we enrolled seven students from Accra, Ghana this year, and it has been super successful. Beautiful. You know, we global y'all. We global, right? And we're loving this model. Not only do we have the uh, the K through 12 online private school, we have our Operation Reconnect adult education program. If you know somebody 16 and up that stopped out of school, they can earn their high school diploma and develop a success plan for their life uh, through us. We're also consulting and training now. We're going from school district to school district, holding private workshops with teachers that want to learn some of the effective tools that we've developed over the years that's allowed us to be an independent school for 14 years straight, founded in 2010, and we ain't never missed a day of class, right? And we're getting results, y'all. So check Check out Uhura Academy. We are a nonprofit organization as well. We are looking for sponsorship partners, community partners, monthly donors, the whole nine yards. Head on over there and figure out how you can support, how you can get involved. If you teach and you want to volunteer to teach a course, come holler at me. You know what I'm saying? We, we do. If you're homeschooling and you need some homeschool coaching, you need to holler at us. All right. We're doing whatever we can do to make sure that our children, our families have education options. It's about having a choice, but That's we can't right. have choices if we don't create those choices for ourselves. Shout out to my beautiful wife and Koyo Ojuwo, co-founder of the Uhura Academy. We have poured our life's work into this mission, and now we want to reap and we want to harvest all that hard work. We want to open it up to you. Come on, join the movement, join the family. Let's get it in. I also want to shout out to my South Carolina Juneteenth Freedom Fest family. All right, we are celebrating Juneteenth here in uh, South Carolina this year. It's the eighth annual June 15th, 2024. They done messed around and put me on the executive committee. I'm vice president, so it's going down. It's I know Juneteenth be all red, red, green, and gold. I know y'all took the black out on purpose, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna put a little black back in it, and we're gonna we're gonna have a great time. It's gonna be a Southern Soul party, Dr. My guy. We got a parade. And I can't give away the surprise grand. No, okay, go give it out. But it's gonna be off the chain. But the education Beautiful. piece this year, oh my goodness. Oh, we're gonna talk about black freedom towns and 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 we oh, and we're launching the first ever Juneteenth Youth Leadership Award. So That's gonna be beautiful. Eye. We are gonna be recognizing young people who are beating the odds in That's our community. Beautiful. We always talk about youth violence. Let's talk about some youth success and recognize those that are doing it the right way in spite of the odds. So we're gonna be celebrating our babies, we're gonna be honoring our elders, having a good time. So I just want to shout out to that team as well. Shout out to my Uhura Academy team, Miss Haley, Mama Alexis, uh, Mama Gabet, and mm -hmm. Koyo Pina. Shout out to UASC International, the model institution on the ground here in uh, in South Carolina. Shout out mm -hmm. to my sister, Cheryl Irvin, New Akiba Line Academy, Broward County, Florida, and all independent African center schools out there doing your part, doing your thing on the ground. I shave. Shout out to you. I shave. Oh, yeah, my yacht. Conscious ingenuity in the building. You understand what I'm saying? I shave, Baba. I shave, Baba. And I'm looking forward. Baba, I'm Baba. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, good, good, good. Because I, I went out for a sec. Baba, I'm looking forward to the UACI Summer STEM program this summer. I mean, I look forward to every iteration, but it just seems like we're just getting better and better as time go on, Baba. It's the, the program is just getting tighter. It's getting better. Family, make sure when we put the call out there, when we put the flyer out there, that you enroll 
your son or your daughter in the UACI summer STEM camp. We typically take children between eight and 17. If it's a mature seven-year-old, we will take the mature seven-year-old, right? But it's typically before children between eight and 17. Family, make sure that you get your children enrolled in UACI summer STEM camp. And also, family, make sure you get your children enrolled in the Conscious Ingenuity program. We are a K through 12 African STEAM program. And when I say STEAM, I'm going to update this website because I, I use STEAM, S-T-E-A-M, because it's popular. People know what, you know, typically know what it is, right? Science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. But what I have started to include um, is a double A, and I put the second A in parentheses. So I say science, technology, engineering, art, agriculture, and mathematics. And so that is what I've been uh, lecturing about as of lately, you know, independence, through STEAM education, but STEAM with a double A. And shout out to Dr. Craig Samuels. He was actually the first person to write up an article on um, the acronym that I just talked about, the STEAM acronym. And he said, Dr. Maad has been, you know, she added another A, you know, to this acronym. And that A stands for agriculture. And I'm so glad that he did it. Because, Baba, before you know it, everybody would be on the internet like, yeah, I do a double A. And they never say, they yeah. never say, oh, well, we were listening to Sister Dr. Maad, and she talked about STEAM education, but she right. included the double A. Nobody would ever said it. So shout out yeah. to Dr. Craig Samuels, who wrote an article um, about it. And Dr. Craig Samuels, if you are in the building, please drop the link to your article in the chat so that the family can uh, read it. But family, make sure you get your children. Come Head on over to ConsciousIngenuity.com and get your child enrolled in Conscious Ingenuity. I'm going to play the video real quick and let the work speak for itself. Come on. So here we go. Conscious Ingenuity is a program that utilizes STEAM to build character, confidence, yeah, yeah. and capabilities. STEAM is an acronym that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. Some of the soft skills that our participants develop are communication, creativity, collaboration, problem solving, and critical thinking. Some of the hard skills that our participants acquire are electric circuits, cybersecurity, coding, storyboarding, and animation development. The instructors at Conscious Ingenuity believe that all students have the capacity to learn. We use culturally responsive strategies in each lesson. The curriculum is infused with lessons that allow students to express themselves through music. We also use animated films to build character and confidence. Thank you for your interest in Conscious Ingenuity. All right. So check this out, family. I'm going to exit the screen, but look at this. Look at what you get. All right. Your children are exposed to cybersecurity, circuit theory, coding, artificial intelligence, robotics, and much, much more. We build character, confidence, and capabilities. We use, we teach the children, you know, African philosophical concepts, right? The principles of Ma'at, the principles of the Nguzo Saba. This is what they are exposed to. And this is what we promote, and this is what we teach, and this is what we practice in order to build their, their character. We build their confidence and capabilities through, first of all, words of affirmation. And secondly, um, we build it through projects. You know, kids, when they complete a project, Bob, they start smiling. You know how it is when yeah, they feel yeah. accomplished, like they did something. <laughs> and so we're building their confidence while building their capabilities through hands-on projects. And so we have educators that we work with in Baltimore City, Baltimore County, Harford County, who love the program. Uh, we make sure that we cultivate critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, uh, teaching our children how to work as a team, right? Team building skills um, and uh, communication uh, skills. Okay. And so anyway, family, make sure that you head on over here and check us out. I do want to shout out my lead instructor. So if you go to meet the team, my lead instructor, Mr. Amon Anderson, he was just with me in Ghana. And when I say that mm. he did a phenomenal job, you I know, see. right there in the trenches with me, um, teaching the babies, want to shot this, this young brother out, 22 years old. And he told me, he said, Doc, thank you so much for taking me to Ghana with you. He said, this has transformed my life. And he also said it motivated him to mm. want to come back and teach, to teach his family and to teach the community. So I just want to take some time Say out to acknowledge this young warrior for, for what he does. Yeah, for what he does 
for uh, the company and what he has been doing for the community. So salute to this young brother right here, uh, brother uh, Amon Anderson. Family, also make sure that you get your son enrolled. And hold on, let me bring up this website and then I'll let you guys go. Also make sure that you get your son enrolled in the Asafo training camp. This is an initiative um, between the initiative that was created by myself and Baba Imhotep Fadiou of the Pan-African Liberation Movement. And when I tell you, y'all, I'm telling you, these boys, look at them, look at on the screen, Ready. our boys, you know, they, 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 they learn critical thinking skills, conflict resolution. They're re reading books about African manhood in the 21st century. Um, they're out there working out with the Babas learning uh, self-defense and all sorts of stuff, Beautiful. you know, so family, make sure that you, that you, that you get your son enrolled in uh, the Asafo training camp. Okay. And so registration should be uh, available within the next couple of weeks. Let me see if I go to meet the team. Do we have our stuff up here yet, Baba? I don't know if we have our stuff up here. Oh no, we didn't put everything up here yet. We didn't update everything yet. But yeah, this is the team basically. Uh, myself, Baba Emotep Fadiou, and then also Baba Amoru right here and Baba Adisa. And when I say that they do a phenomenal job with our young boys, they do an absolute okay. phenomenal job um, with our young boys. And so this is like a week long uh, character enrichment um, camp, Baba. And so I'm telling you, any if your son is between 11 and 14, make sure that you get your child uh, enrolled in the Asafo training camp. We're actually getting ready to offer the Agoji training camp for young girls um, between the ages of like 11 and 14. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Both of the camps are for people between the ages of 12 and 14. Okay. But we will be offering uh, the Agoji camp for young girls this summer alongside the Asafo training camp. So family, make sure that you are aware you can, uh, that when these flyers drop, that mm. once we make you aware, I'm sorry, once we make you aware that you get your children enrolled um, as soon as possible because spaces are limited. Because, again, we want to give your child an intimate experience. And as Baba said, it's not about quantity. It's about quality. Ashe, Baba, do you have any closing words for the listening audience? Just uh, stay aware out there, y'all. You know, stay aware. Study. Ask questions. You don't have to have all the answers. Life is about having the right questions. Continue asking the right questions. And you just saw solutions put in front of your face, right? Support these solutions. Well, we don't have that where we are. Well, support it where it is so we can get it where you are, all right? Get on board, all right? Netflix don't need no more of your money. Make a monthly donation. To give up Netflix and pick up Conscious Ingenuity. Give up Hulu and pick up the Uhuru. Academy, you, you know what I'm saying, and and, and and we can build, y'all. We can build like that. All right, it, it, these issues that we have, they have solutions, and we are the solutions we that we've been solution. waiting for. Ashe, Ashe, Bob, and Bob, thank you so much for taking time That's out right. of your busy schedule to be with me tonight, to be with our viewers. You know, you're a busy man, and look, you all are on spring break, and you yes. could be cooling out. But you're right here. Look, <laughs> you're right here, educated. Look, you're right here, educating and right. you know, and teaching, doing what you know, doing what you normally do, Baba. So it's I do fun, appreciate, man. absolutely, I appreciate your time, I appreciate your energy, and I appreciate Thank your man. wisdom and your work, Baba. So appreciate you, Thank family. You. Right now, make sure that you tune in. Tune in. We'll be live again on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have the sister Isalee Iz Danto coming on to talk about the crisis, the crisis in Haiti. And so she'll be coming on at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Thursday. And then on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I have our brother, brother, Ankh, a.k.a. Bobby West is coming on because there are some folks in the community, the pro-black community, mm -hmm who are bang, banging on STEM. And Sister Juju, I got to put you on with that. I, already, I talked to Ankh about it. And Sister Juju, I want you to join the panel as well if you are available at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday. There are some people in the community that are banging on STEM. They're saying things like, you know, we don't need any more STEM people. We need to be pushing ideology more than we push STEM. You know, STEM alone ain't going to save African people, which I agree with to a certain degree. But they started banging and they were saying things like, you know, we need more people that are pushing ideology than more people who are pushing science, technology, engineering and math. Uh, if anybody knows me, 
you know that I, you know, I don't, I don't agree with that, that position, that position a hundred percent. And so make sure that you join me on Friday and I'm gonna let you all hear them say it. And it's not just one person, it's three people. And I'm going to let you all hear what they had to say about it out of their own mouths. And then brother Ankh and myself, and if sister Juju can join us, um, we will be discussing that. Baba, you have a beautiful night to everyone under the sound of my voice. You have a beautiful, beautiful night. Peace and black power. Let's combat and fight back with maltrax. The war of the minds, they want control of the masses. And common core, they dumb us down in the classes. Without knowledge, we can't gain access. Build with the elders, take notes and write classes. We keep whining on the block, how it's gonna stop. Let's start supporting our own, make their supply drop. We buy stocks, then we buy blocks. Cause we know the truth, and we tuned in to Dr. Maya. Uh.